All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, my name is Alan. As always, I'm your host. Welcome to another episode of The Table. We are joined at the table by two new guests. I'm going to have Deidre introduce yourself first. Just your name, your age, your relationship status. Ooh. Ooh. Deidre Carter, a.k.a. D. Barry Monroe. Portia calls me Stella. Stella. <laughs> I am 35 and I am single. Thank mm. you, oh. All right. I am Shanika Robinson, better known as Nika Danae, better known as Queen Neek, and mm. I am 40 and single, child. I'm yes. Stella. You ain't Stella. I'm Stella. Mm. Yeah, Stella. Get my name back. I'm Stella. 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 We're going to talk about it. But before we get to it, um, Porky. You famous now? Yeah, one real. Yeah, it's at two million right now. Mm. Wow. What has been the reception as far as like what have you seen and mm. what? I guess what would you like to say to the people? What do you think they missed? What do you think they got? What impact do you think your phrase, your your people quoting you right now? Even I'm anyway, right. I'm getting like, quoted. What impact? Girl is quotable. Yeah. You feel like <laughs> indeed <laughs> that was a powerful okay, moment. That so that was a lot. I'm a, um I'm gonna try to answer all those if I forget one. Just let you. me know. Thank you. you. Um, first and foremost, thank you guys for supporting us how you do. We appreciate it all. Mm. Um, the comments, the criticisms, the shout outs, the kudos, mm. all of it is appreciated. Um, honestly, I, I, it just feels regular. I mm -hmm. like, um, I'm not somebody, I, I get uncomfortable when people know me. <laughs> that's probably, that's not mm -hmm. good because Same. of the fact that of the mm -hmm. line of business I'm in, but yeah. I like being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a little bit strange, but more so I'm just taking it mm -hmm. as it comes because it ain't nothing changed but a bunch of views on mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, I have had a lot of like friends reach out to me, um, whether it be through comments on stuff or direct messages or texting me, just thanking me for saying it, mm -hmm. which, I mean, you're welcome. I love mm -hmm. y'all. mean it. It's from the heart. Um, that part I, I can appreciate because I didn't, I didn't expect for it to touch nobody like it did, mm -hmm. but I appreciate how folks are taking it and understanding that it's necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all going to get off my guy. <laughs> uh -oh. We're going to get uh -oh. to him. We're going to get to him. So you missed the context of the conversation. Always remember when he showed, when Alan shows y'all a clip of something, it's just a clip. We have to understand that, and I know why you did it, because if you knew what reaction was going to get, we got to mm -hmm. stop feeding into those reactions, people. Mm -hmm. Understand that you got to see it from the whole episode, not just that, because my guy wasn't just singling out bashing women. I promise you, mm -hmm. I wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not playing those we games. Do, exactly. you, do you see this mm -hmm. pineapple? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I would never. That means business. <laughs> it, it means business, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. If we're not doing that, but mm -hmm. get off my guy. But no, for real, thank you guys for supporting us. Mm -hmm. I love it. Feel free, and you can DM me, like the ladies with the questions about makeup and stuff. I am a makeup artist, so mm -hmm. you ain't got a comment there. I'm probably not going to see it because I'm not supposed to look at comments and stuff. I see them when y'all at me, mm -hmm. and I, I try to respond to them. If you have questions about makeup, about what I said, you just want to talk, you just want to be lifted up, please feel free to DM me. I'm not that girl that's going to be like, oh, honey, I don't know you. I'm not going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you weird, I'm just going to delete you and block you, mm -hmm. period. But I want people to know that like, when I say these things, I mean them. I'm I'm all for uplifting us, making us better as a people. So mm -hmm. if you need something and I got some grace or some light to share with you, I will. Mm. For sure. I think I answered everything. You did. All yeah. right. You no, know, we're Phenomenal going to, right? job. Uh, Phenomenal all right. job. <laughs> so you, bro. so what, 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 what was your take, man? Because they were coming for you in the comments. Man, I mean, some people take... would share it and be like, if only they had cut out that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about it, man? I just felt um, the accountability part. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't receive the accountability because mm -hmm. when we was having a conversation, I was saying that what she said was home. We knew it was an impactful moment, mm -hmm. you know, because you could see the response between mm -hmm. me and Alan. We was like, oh, yeah, say that because they yeah, need yeah. to hear that, you know. Yeah. So when you started talking about it and, and you gave that PowerPoint to, you know, women needing to, to know that. And I mm -hmm. said, you know, well, they need to hear that from women. Mm -hmm. They didn't like that. But if they would have watched mm -hmm. the whole video, mm -hmm. they'd have understood the context in which the whole conversation was leaning towards. But they didn't get that. They got that clip of death. Mm. That right. clip of death and was like, hey, you know, I ain't feeling that. You know, I'm, I'm in the comments like, go watch the whole video. Right. I'm, they like, nah, I ain't finna do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's all right. They ate you up or chewed you out, but it's okay. Yeah, they was on me. Like, like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. And, and I was the, thing, the thing about it, too, is like, and I, I told you this, yeah. unfortunately, our community is, is set up in a way where 
the only way to get our attention is inflammatory mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. You got to yeah. piss people Without off or turn people on. Without mm-hmm. a doubt. Right? So now, as somebody trying to market all this work that we're putting in, mm-hmm. I have to For piss sure. people off yeah. and turn people on. Mm-hmm. Hoping that they actually go watch it, mm-hmm. but most of the time that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. But let, let's transition. So I'm going to get y'all up to speed. Yeah, right. okay, because so, we over here like, yeah, so, <laughs> episode one, um, we we pretty much we argued a little bit. Yeah. Right? Oh, it was okay. it, it were two other uh, young ladies, the three? Mm-hmm. Three. Three. Yeah, three, three, three other young ladies, and basically we were just having a conversation about what are the things that men misunderstand about women, what are the things women misunderstand about men, uh-huh. and um, is the grace that we are asked to show to each other, is it equitable, right? Are we Mm -hmm. thinking as men about the perspective of women and vice versa? Uh. So episode two, I called that progress because I think we made progress Mm because Orky, Mm -hmm. (laughs) she was coming at us episode Mm -hmm. one. But episode two, um, also it was only three of us on episode two. So Mm -hmm. we really had in-depth conversation. We were on the couch. And then episode three, um, that's the viral clip. That's so viral clip. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that we're progressing this conversation and moving mm-hmm. it in the right direction. And I guess we can use this Will Smith situation. Mm-hmm. My God. Because a lot of men are talking about My it. Goodness. A lot of women are talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start with you, matter of fact. Oh. What's, your, what's, your, what's your take on the entire situation? And is there a part of this that you feel like we're missing or people aren't focusing on? Mm. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's a part that we're not focusing on. I mm. would say there's probably a lot of things that we don't know, mm. a lot of things mm. going on in the background, a lot of context that's missing. Sure. Um, I do feel like when it comes to celebrities, um, just as you just said, you got to do things that are going to turn people on, mm. piss people off. Mm-hmm. So, of course, um, Jada is almost like the queen of that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Queen of controversy, almost. Yeah. Yeah. So if she wants to get out in the limelight of publicity, she's going to do something mm. to piss people off <laughs> or right. turn them on. Right. And a lot of times it's, it's really killing um, the men, really. Mm-hmm. It's kind of ema- demasculating mm-hmm. and emasculating, mm-hmm. you know, Will most of the time, mm-hmm. even down to the slap. He was in the limelight, but she was behind that, the driving right. force. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of things that are not in context, but I do feel like she's a little bit selfish on the act of, okay, Mm -hmm. if I have something that's getting ready to come out, I'm going to stir it up no matter if he's hurt, no matter if. Mm -hmm. Now, whether they have an understanding concerning that, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. He may be like, do what you have to do. But just as a partner, I don't think I would go along with that. I don't care what you're trying to market Mm -hmm. or what you're trying to get out there. If it's going to cause a backlash on me, then no, that is not a partnership. That Mm -hmm. is not us leaning on each other. That is not an understanding. I'm going to support you, but not when it's coming off on me. But I do think it's a lot going on in the background. And I think she needs therapy, Jesus, <laughs> mm. um, deliverance, God. baptism, exorcism. Yeah. exorcism. She needs to turn that yeah. round table um, to a square table. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, she just <laughs> needs her mic cut off, um, yeah. Yeah. amongst other things. Yeah. I just think there's a lot of internal things in her that we're mm. just now witnessing mm. aloud. Right. There's a lot of trauma that we're just not witnessing aloud mm. that right. he's probably seen for years. So it's not. A surprise, yeah. but now we're yeah. like, what in the world? Because when we watch celebrities, we see this one side mm-hmm. of everything. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. see this pretty picture. Mm-hmm. And with a picture, it's different than a video. And a picture, when you take a picture, that's a still shot. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's what's happening then. In a video, there's more context. More you content. can hear what's going on, what's mm-hmm. being said, what the attitudes are, what the moods are. So mm-hmm. I feel like this is something that's been going on in her, and I feel like she's spiraling. I'm going to mm-hmm. come back to that. But Deidre, <laughs> mm-hmm. why do you feel like so many men are mm-hmm. triggered. Cause because to your point, we don't triggered know triggered by what Jada's doing. Triggered by the optics of everything, from the initial August Alcina situation to the Tupac video to all her antics. Obviously, we don't know all the behind the scenes mm-hmm. of the point, mm-hmm. but something about it is resonating with a whole lot of mm-hmm. men who right. might not know a Jada, but might know somebody who's Jada-ish. Right. So why why do you think so many men are triggered by this? Because to me, it's blatant betrayal. Mm-hmm. Like, she betrayed her husband. She betrayed their... Sorry. She betrayed their union to me mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. exploiting whatever happened is that, whatever is happening in their personal marriage. Mm-hmm. And she put it out to the public. Just like if a, a girl and a guy are together and then a, they break up and a girl decides to go on Facebook and expose, this is what he did to me in a relationship, this, that, and the third... Mm-hmm. And then it's hard for somebody to want to trust that again when you put our private business 
and put it out. So I think men are triggered because it's like, I think men have a hard time trusting women. Mm. And like, they I do. I, I think they do. <laughs> I think they have a hard time trusting women mm. um, based off of maybe because when we react with our emotions about mm. certain things, it could be way bigger than what they probably expected or whatever. So, mm-hmm. but that's what I think. I think is I think they're triggered because they've been betrayed before and they see like, oh, she's betraying him. Mm-hmm. Like she's not mm-hmm. loyal. Mm-hmm. Cause no man wants their woman to go out and tell all their business. Like mm-hmm. whatever happens in our household, it stays there. I think it should mm-hmm. stay between us. For sure. And regardless, I feel like you using your platform to make a profit mm-hmm. and using the relationship and throwing it on the bus is like insane to me. And I'm not mm. with it. I'm not. That's what's up. I posted on my yeah. Facebook like, Jada is the type of wife I do not want to be. Ever. I'm not a wife Not yet, even close. But I would never want to betray Come my on, man now. like that. Period. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Even if we are separated, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. not doing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think, but I want to hear you answer yeah. the question. So, to me, I feel like it's blatant disrespect to loyalty. Yeah. And for a man, loyalty is everything. Yes. If you are loyal to a man, yes. he will put up with everything else as long as you are loyal. Mm. And the fact that Will is putting up with so much disloyalty is a trigger. Because if you think about it, most women, if a man cheats, she's going to take him back and forgive him. Yeah. But on the flip side, if a woman cheats on a man, baby, you it's done. So, it's, yeah. it's finito. Yeah. It's nothing. Because the... Um, honor that they hold loyalty in mm-hmm. is up here mm-hmm. and once you do that mm-hmm. it crumbles every the very foundation for yep. a man is loyalty yep. mm-hmm. uh, whichever way you spin it mm-hmm. so she's blatantly disrespecting loyalty being loyal to a man and will is putting up Listen. so they're triggered you know what I found interesting she was loyal to the lie mm-hmm. but she wasn't loyal to the man to the man mm-hmm. that didn't make sense to me what like lie you, you know the, the whole lie as far as them uh, not being in a marriage. Oh, yeah. you see what separated. I'm saying? Like they yeah. held that, you know what I mean, for whatever agreement they had. Right. You know, yeah. so she was loyal to the lie. Like yeah. we ain't gonna let people know what's going on. Right. We're gonna, we're gonna fake the pump mm. until gonna, it's time for her. Yeah. Until it's time for her. Until it's time. Yeah. Until it's time, to yeah. Mm. It was so her that, for her benefit. That's a dangerous woman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that was loyal to the lie. For real. Loyal to the lie. I don't like it. I don't like the movie. And then the fact that it may be a man that's triggered that's been cheated on. That's that's how it is. This because loyalty. a lot of men, listen, I never knew how dirty and low down women could be. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm so shocked. Y'all, about y'all are the low downest. <laughs> All right. Y'all I'm, I'm old. I mean, All right. Not too much. Don't do it. Don't so do it. I'm, I'm going to say not this. Too much. I, I think the reason why so many men are triggered, mm-hmm. um, I think it's the optics, number one. But the main reason I think is let's go back to the August Alcina situation. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's imagine. An alternate universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Willow Smith comes home with one of her friends, an aspiring actress. Mm-hmm. My God. Later on, it comes out that her and Will were fucking. Right. Mm-hmm. She had lost some of her family members. She was suffering some, from some kind of disease. Oh, he's a predator. Mm-hmm. And he's labeled a predator. What level of prison would Will Smith be in right now? Oh, uh, under he'd be the jail. Oh, that would be like, like oh my God, God you prayed on that break. girl. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you groomed yeah, her. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But when it's flipped, she gets a talk show. She makes millions of dollars over literally being predatory because mm-hmm. she's like, you know, what is she, 5'11 or 5'2 yeah. or something like that? So I think ultimately, and maybe some men can't articulate this, mm-hmm. but it's the inequity in mm-hmm. judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Nobody oh. would even consider any nuance or whatever the case yeah. may be the same way we consider it for women. And mm-hmm. I think that's what leads to so many men being crucified, whether publicly or in court, that's so right. unfairly. Because mm-hmm. you're guilty off top. Off if top. Will had just looked at the girl wrong, this right. hypothetical mm-hmm. yeah. female yeah. August yeah. Alcina, mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. life would have been, been over. Yeah. But she yeah. gets to tell a story, write a book, do talk shows, <laughs> do a media circuit. <laughs> and I think ultimately at the core, that's what a lot of men yeah. upset about that for sure mm-hmm. and that's where the separatism comes in at yeah and we're not able to have better relationships because of the inequalities mm-hmm. you know so men you know we're naturally we're going to stand up for what we believe in and when we do that you know we're judged for that you know mm-hmm. it, it gets taken out of context because we want to have a voice too like you said you know mm-hmm. she can get millions of dollars you know build a platform but if a man did it you know they bring up something with bill cosby what 30 40 years ago mm-hmm. right right 
Yes. And convict mm-hmm. him for something that probably was con- uh, consent. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we don't know what took place, but, right. you know, just the inequalities, you know, in a system that mm-hmm. says men, you know, we hear it enough that men ain't shit. Right. right. You know, is a, is a constant, you know, but the reality is men, you know, we build the infrastructure of the world. Mm-hmm. And when we go out and do that, we still don't have the respect because respect is really big for men. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. For sure. Along with loyalty. And, and so like I, I said, like I said in episode, I think it was two when we were on the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I encourage men to do is actually talk to women yes. mm-hmm. and listen to yes. some of their stories. Thank yes. you. Because sure. what you will hear is, I was touched when I was five. Yeah. Was. And because of that, it led mm-hmm. to this type of behavior the and, trauma. you know, this mm-hmm. type of, you know, stuff that happened in my life. Now, unfortunately, a lot of boys have those same experiences. Mm-hmm. We don't frame it that way, though. Mm-hmm. We say, oh, he liked it. You mm-hmm. know, that, that 16 year old who was fucking on him when he was mm-hmm. eight, mm-hmm. he yeah. liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But those same results come from the. So these mm-hmm. men who are promiscuous, the we call them trauma. fuck boys. Mm-hmm. Oh, not, it's the same it's trauma. The same tra- it's yeah. expressed differently. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. For sure. But we don't empathize with men. We only empathize with women. And that was the whole point I was making mm-hmm. about if we're really going to see a, a, a community with better men mm-hmm. and better women, the equity of empathy has to be there. That's For sure. We can't just focus Absolutely. on all the things that, because, yo, a lot of dudes are suffering. For yeah. sure. Yeah. They're going oh, through it. They are. But we yeah. don't think about it like yeah. that. And unfortunately, the messed up part about it, we reward them for being more damaged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't reward healthy men. Mm-hmm. No, I We don't know, reward honey. healthy masculinity. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. just complain about it. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But a healthy you know, man I'm is... laughing at you. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Because a healthy man is everything to me nowadays. And and I have to say, for me, I learned to value men more and not look at them as like this thing mm. or like this, this. Because for me, a man was always a, like a mission, mm. a toy, a little miss. An accessory. To play with. Yeah, yeah, like something to play with him. Like mm-hmm. it's something yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. And so this year, I, I literally have to say this year, I re- really took the time to value men, listen to them and be their friend more mm-hmm. than just like, what can you do for me? And mm-hmm. I'm not even a, what can you do for me financially type of girl? Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I want you to come over here. <laughs> I want to mm-hmm. see you. Like, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what can you what do happened? for me? What, what you mean? What, like, what triggered that change for you? My breakup. I had a breakup mm-hmm. last year. Ooh. And so I felt like, uh, we fast forwarded that relationship, and I never learned how to be a friend to a man mm-hmm. before. Never, mm-hmm. and I feel like if I, I wasn't a real friend to men ever. I don't think I don't mm-hmm. think I was to, to say how I'm a friend because I love a girl. Like mm-hmm. I love my my girlfriends. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I didn't value men in the same way because, like I said, I look at them as toys, right? Mm-hmm. So with my ex. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's powerful. That's good. Yeah. I'm just Keep saying going. that's good. So with my ex, I really wanted to be serious with him, but we were moving like super fast. Too fast. And then like he abandoned a relationship. Mm-hmm. So then I had to take a look within. Like, okay, so ain't no man gonna just stop talking to you for no reason. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sometimes yes, mm-hmm. but at mm-hmm. the same time, I can't sit up here and be like. I didn't do anything at all. Mm. So I had to retract. Like, <laughs> Accountability. What did yes. I do? Necessary. What could I have done? And not saying that it's completely my fault. However, I play a part. Because mm. everybody play a part when you're in a relationship. That's That's right. So 100%. what part did I play? What could I have done that I probably feel like if it was the other way around, I wouldn't have wanted them to do that to me. Mm. And so it took me a little minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all right. It took me a little while right. to get it together. Mm-hmm. But I figured out what it was. And I apologized. Mm-hmm. He never responded to me apologizing, but I did it for me mm-hmm. because I felt like I needed to free myself from, if I hurt you, mm-hmm. I need to apologize and say that Absolutely. I hurt you. Mm-hmm. And regardless if you accept my apology or not, I know that I did that for me. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I can Come move on. You. you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to throw this question to the both of y'all. Who mm-hmm. wants to go first? Go it don't first? matter. Okay, Good Porky, matter. you go first. All right. Why do you think it is so difficult for most women, baseline, to empathize with men. Mm. Hmm. Take your time with it. Um, yeah, I got to think. That's, mm. That's, mm. I expect something good from you because you, mm. you got time now. Mm-hmm. Honestly, because kind of like what Deidre said, we don't take the time to 
get to know men as people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's get to know a man to see where we could go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of that male and female friendship thing, more so in this day and age, to me, it's more so non-existent mm. than it used to be. Because like some of my best friends in this world are men. Mm. And I, I talk to them like I talk to my homegirls. Sometimes to their chagrin. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> um, but like, and they call me bro sometimes, too, just because mm. we have that relationship. Mm-hmm. But when you take the time to get to know men as people, right. mm-hmm. you have yeah. a new respect for them. Mm-hmm. But in, in the same token, when a man takes the time to get to know a woman as a person, mm-hmm. yeah. You're able to let down those walls that otherwise from bears that would that wouldn't that would be there. Yeah. Like you're not so focused on she wants me to have this, 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 I want to look like this, this, this. No, I can see you at your worst. I've seen you broken yes. and I, I'm okay with that. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times we're putting on airs, we're putting on these facades and these shows, so you mm. don't get to know the real person as a person. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. more so for the, I guess for the hunt, I guess mm-hmm. I'll say. Yeah. Rather than for that relationship. Genuine. So yeah. maybe if we start working on getting relationships mm-hmm. with men and women down packed, then we could have less, mm-hmm. you know, space. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's we don't we don't take that time to get to know them as people rather than just male female. Right. Right. Definitely. I agree. But I definitely agree. And it all comes down to, I think, a lot of times, too, we have this idea of what a man is, should be, whether it's mm-hmm. planted in us as a young girl, what our mothers told us with other women and said what a man should be. So we we dehumanize them and yes. we look at them at this, as this robot. Mm-hmm. And I can say for myself, I've had somebody tell me, you, you act like I'm a robot, like I don't have feelings. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't think you did, really. I didn't <laughs> right. think you did. You're a man. You're strong. <laughs> You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed mm-hmm. to show up. I'm the one that's supposed to to show the emotions, right? But when you get to know a man and the makeup of a man, they mm-hmm. can be just as vulnerable as us. Yes, they're just as broken mm-hmm. as us, just right. as traumatized mm-hmm. as us. They just internalize a lot because yes. men don't speak. Mm-hmm. When a man get, gets quiet, he's thinking. They mm-hmm. don't do. We do a lot of talking because we we're yes. emotional, yes. and so men they do a lot of thinking. And so I think it's just we don't get to know them and say, okay, who are you? Not what can you be to me right. as a woman? Can you be a husband? Can you be a provider? Yes. Can you be a father? Yes. Can you be X Y Z? But who are you as a man let mm-hmm. me get to know you mm-hmm. and be a friend and see how we can come together as one yes. and I can be of support to you to right. undergird you because I'm the help mate period so therefore I'm gonna help you be all that you can be mm-hmm. as the army say but I gotta mm-hmm. get to know who you are as a man and the makeup of you yes. opposed to what everybody has told me what a man should be right uh, what a man's mm-hmm. a husband should be this and so now I got this game plan in this rule book in this mm-hmm. list, the mm-hmm. list mm-hmm. of what my husband should Child. be and if you don't come off uh, with everything on this Liz, then you got to go mm. and what celebrate else? the beauty and the vulnerability of a Come man. On. You have, yes. you have to encourage that vulnerability. And that's the right. biggest Don't. compliment as a woman you can get. For a man to open Baby. up to you and be vulnerable, that means he sees you as a safe place. Yes. And a lot of times as women, we want to, we want that safe space, but we don't provide that safe right. space. But when a man can say, oh, I can come and talk to you about my day or what I'm dealing with or that I'm, I'm emotionally just all over the place, that's mm-hmm. a compliment. Mm-hmm. But a lot of men don't feel safe enough to do so. So mm-hmm. it's hard to get to know him because we don't give him a safe enough space right. to be who he is. Yeah. So we meet the representative mm-hmm. because they're under so much pressure to mm-hmm. make us feel like I'm this man that she wants me to be mm-hmm. opposed to this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Right. Yeah. yeah. My, my take on it would be, I feel like the world has blinded women in a sense of looking at men as a masculine power. Mm. So consistently we are looked at masculine so we can deal with everything. Yeah. So we're constantly looked to deal and accept everything that comes our way mm-hmm. and not have an opinion about it. So when a woman looks at a man, she's going to look at a man as, oh, you're a weak or a bitch ass nigga if you complaining about your feelings and emotions to me, right? Mm. If, I, if I'm trying to express myself, the woman is going to say, I'm weak. Yeah. So a lot mm. of times the man is going to go back into a place of mm. not feeling like he can express himself because it is power in, in, in his expression. There's right. So mm-hmm. But if he can't express it because the woman don't allow him to, right. then it's never an export for him. You right. know, he's never going to export how he's feeling. Mm-hmm. So then he keeps that in because the world says he has to be masculine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No right. lie. I saw this. Well, I was, I don't know who did it, but there was some rapper or somebody famous who his girlfriend bought him a car or something recently. Mm. And he's, like I said, he's a rapper, hard down. He's been in prison, all this stuff. And he cried. Mm. And he was like, nobody's ever done this for me before. Mm. And I was sitting in this room with people 
and a young lady was talking about it. And her reaction to it was, I was like, ew, you don't been in prison. You sitting up here crying. Mm. And in my head, I said, this is why we have a problem. That's where we have That's a problem. Because immaturity. he said, the man said that no one has ever done something of this nature to him before. Mm -hmm. And he's not allowed to cry. Mm. Because you've been to prison you, and you're a man, you are not allowed to cry. Mm. Because you're so full up on joy over something that somebody you love has done for you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they love you and want to see you happy. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Exactly. If and we most, if we can't have that, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And most men are raised that way. Mm -hmm. right. Our brothers that have sons, and they're, they're, the son ain't allowed to cry. You're not allowed. Mm -hmm. Man up, man up. So that's burning their brain exactly. already. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So you kind of have to de help deprogram them yeah. as right. their woman, as their partner to say, it's sure. okay, it's all right. I ain't going to tell nobody. I'm not yeah. going to laugh. I'm mm -hmm. not going to throw it up in your face. Mm -hmm. And as women, we have to know mm -hmm. when he does come to that point to where he can be vulnerable, close your mouth mm -hmm. and don't bring it up tomorrow about he was crying when you get Get upset, right? And you want well, you was crying the other day. You just weak. Right. You just, no, yeah. now he's retreated right. two years back. So exactly. he didn't do it. So you ruined. <laughs> so it. now sure. you used it as leverage and as ammunition. And yeah. he'll never trust you again. Never yeah. that part, and he's gonna find somebody else. Yeah. For sure. Period. Yeah. I'll, I'll say <laughs> this because I, I don't want to put all the blame on women. I think. Oh, we're not doing that, but that's no. the truth. Yeah, it's it's the no, truth. I, I, I'll, I'll say this: like in my journey of mm -hmm. trying to understand the world and shit like that. Mm -hmm. When you study history, mm -hmm. masculinity is about dying well. Mm -hmm. Masculinity and death are kind of correlated, mm -hmm. right? He died whether, a hero. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. whether, but it, it's, it's whether you died marching into a coal mine, an oil mm -hmm. rig, mm -hmm. uh, marching in a battle. Yeah. Uh, whether you killed your dreams to pr protect or mm -hmm. provide for you. A lot of dudes mm -hmm. wouldn't go to school because they had to work the field. Mm -hmm. to, you know what I'm saying? So... Masculinity is about, in, in some sense, dying well and how you're remembered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because during your life, people are going to talk shit. Or he, just like Deion Sanders right mm -hmm. now, he ain't do this enough, did this enough. Yeah. If he right. died to tomorrow, yeah. oh, he'd be the man, he'd be you see what I'm saying? So yeah. with that being said, <clears throat> there's never been an incentive for men to be emotionally expressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's more of an incentive for us to be callous, for us to be rough and rigid enough to be able to bear whatever pains whatever. come with battle mm -hmm. or work. Or 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 politics or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. from the villages of Africa mm -hmm. all the way mm -hmm. to the United mm -hmm. States. So, with that being said, I think we need to be careful about that. There, there seems to be like a growing condescension mm. amongst women, mm. and you kind of alluded to it, episode one, when you said men need to tap into their femininity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a, there's this the sense masculine. of a healed man or an ideal man is a man who is relative to women, who is closer to femininity without acknowledging all the reasons why your brother's son right. can't cry. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Like it's nice for him to cry, but in the real world, not. Nah, yeah. He can't cry. Right. Mm -hmm. And his ability to compartmentalize things mm -hmm. and, and be able to act accordingly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is more valuable than his ability to cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to be honest about that. Yeah. That because unfortunately, especially a lot of young boys, whether it's from women or whether it's from the world, just like media generally right now, mm -hmm. they're getting mixed me messages. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want you to be a nice guy, mm -hmm. but I'm giving pussy to the nigga who's not nice at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want you to be communicative and emotionally intelligent, mm -hmm. but the guy who had me bent over is none of those things. Mm -hmm. Right. And men are observing these <laughs> yeah. things and saying, right. For sure. oh, motherfuckers full of shit. <laughs> you're talking out both yeah. sides of your neck right. because your words and your idealism are are advocating for one kind of masculinity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while simultaneously rewarding mm -hmm. a different type, a more traditional. But, but then men do the same thing because y'all not going. If you saying we're going to be with the f boys, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we want our husband to be the good guy. Yeah, you want TD Jason in the young thug suit. <laughs> But, but not TD no, no, Jason not, and Young Hugs, because I don't want neither one of them because I'm a, I'm close to the Bible, but I'm a little far removed from mm, Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. TD, maybe uh, Darius, not a Darius. Is that what was his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. TD Little. Not a Darius. That's Uncle TD. Child, listen. So, but men don't necessarily take the whole series either. You get what I'm saying? But y'all won't want y'all wife to be, y'all want y'all wife to be a certain type of way or different than what the hoe is. You get what I'm saying? I think I think men oh, I, I think men love more authentically than women. Huh? Oh. 
And this is what I mean by that. You Wait. say you say say it again. <laughs> I say I think men <laughs> I love adjust. more authentically than women, and this is why. I can agree. But go ahead. Before you say your okay. spiel, before you say your spiel, I'm gonna see where you're going with it and mm. see if I'm I'm feeling where you're you coming from. You've heard me say it before. Okay, so okay because women we can find and look and, and figure out how to love somebody. Mm-hmm. We can love your potential. Mm-hmm. We can love what you're going to become or Correct. we're going we're gonna to make you. Correct. But when a man falls in love with a woman, mm-hmm. he pursues her with a vigor like nothing else. No. He, when he's in love with that woman, that is his love. That's where you, mm-hmm. like he's focused on it. But us, we can find a way to love. You know, no. I'm not, yeah, we, we will. We will love some potential. We've I'm done gonna, it. Yeah. We've done it before. Mm-hmm. I've done it before. Plenty of I'm times. I love now. what they will become. I ain't doing it no more. I ain't doing Thank it no you more. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. But <laughs> we, we, and deliverance. when we say we love somebody, we, our feelings are so a part of our makeup that yeah. mm-hmm. we jump into it. Yeah. That, those feelings of love, whatever, feel like, whatever it is. And we overlook a multitude of faults and mess. Mm-hmm. With a man, it's hyper-focused. When it's that woman, boom, he's in it. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm breaking down for you. Oh, well, break it so, down, then. Uh, break it down. What you got? <laughs> and it brought me back to when I heard y'all heard this saying a man marries who he wants and a woman mm. marries who she can mm. Mm. and I heard that and I got upset and I was like wait a minute what you mean but when you think about it a man is very solid on his boundaries when it comes to his legacy and giving his last name yep. now having a girlfriend for years whatever he does with you for years mm-hmm. but when it comes to his last name and his legacy Amen. as a wife mm-hmm. He don't bend on his boundaries. Us as women, if he mm. has the potential mm. to be a good husband and we can kind of make it up and make it look like it, we were, what mm. we want it to be, we'll bend on deal breakers and boundaries mm. in order to get a ring. Yeah, because sure. I, we fantasize it. about yeah. marriage. Yeah. But mm. a man, he, I don't care what you do. You can threaten to leave. You can leave. He'll be there with you 10 years if you stay. Mm. But when he gets ready to get married, he's going to marry done. who he wants. It's starting to sound like y'all agree with me. He, <laughs> I was like, I, was, I, 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 I know he's going to. And I had to think about that and be mature about that because I was like, hey, no way, I'm going to marry who I want. But let's think about when I went back through the relationships I had been in, Mm -hmm. a lot of them was because I could, Mm -hmm. not because that's who I wanted, because I picked something that I could deal with and make up this man and Mm -hmm. build a man Mm -hmm. and then go along with it. But in those men that would not commit, those men that stayed Mm -hmm. in those situationships, he wasn't bending. I don't care what trick Mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you swing from the chandelier, cook, clean, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It don't matter because whatever it is he's looking for in a wife, if you don't have it, he's you won't get a ring. He's going to peep it. He's going to peep it early. Early yeah. on. He's going to give you years to they change it. early. And if you don't change it, you know, he 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 already got an exit strategy. Mm-hmm. See, he see that's how, like you said, a man loves a woman, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if like, let me give you an example. If we find a woman that's broken, right? We'll love that broken woman. We'll try to raise her up out of her brokenness. And... The day that she doesn't acknowledge that value that he's put into her, mm-hmm. he accident. Mm-hmm. He's never going to marry that because he already know that you didn't take the time to evaluate the time that he put in to that whole span of your growth and development. So he's like, you know what? Mm. You wasted my time mm. because my time was an investment. You ever heard the saying that the most valuable thing you can give a person is your time? Mm. It is. So if a man spends five or 10 years with you and you got a woman say, girl, he ain't marry you yet. Right? It ain't that he don't want to marry you. It's something in you that he see that ain't marriable. Mm. <laughs> well, Which he means so. he, should he should exit. Uh, yeah. But as women, my oh, my God. <laughs> but as women, oh, oh, we stay baby. there and try to force yes, that yeah. instead of saying, if you ain't figured out in a year or two, baby, exactly. we can be cool, but I'm out because whatever it is you want to see, either I'm not getting it and I'm exactly. not going to waste any more of my time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm going to let you go ahead. If you mm-hmm. see it from afar, then go ahead. But mm-hmm. if not, I'm out. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, I mean, I so tell us why. So, so to go back to the point, uh, <laughs> men love more authentically than women. What I mean by that, women are in love with love. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I think you guys are wired to stick anybody in that spot. You can, mm-hmm. you can make him fit. <laughs> and part of, part of the reason I know that, like I'm when I've had conversations with <laughs> right. women um, that I was involved with, and, you know, let's say we were talking about sex. Mm. 
Very often, a woman's sex dream, it's a silhouette of a man. Yeah. It's not even somebody they know. Mm. Mm. Very often, like when I ask her, okay, who was it? It was just a shadow. I be knowing who mine be. You, uh, you might be. You <laughs> might be dream, but but, but I say that to say, <laughs> you, you guys are socialized from little girls to fall in love with the process, the pageantry of love, the the courting phase and the mm-hmm. dates and the, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He put his hand on my thigh and we walked down the aisle and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, <laughs> when a man fi- figures out that realizes he's in love, that's not a happy experience. He's like, God damn it. Because that is oh, wow. a responsibility. No, he's telling the truth. Now, because again, our two jobs are provide and protect. Mm-hmm. I love her means that I'm willing to die for her. That's not right. part of your responsibility. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So we're not going to be as flippant or as, uh, you know, generous with that love. Plus, yeah. we're not socialized to fall in love with mm-hmm. the whole process mm-hmm. and shit mm-hmm. like that. Right. There was a, a stand-up special by Patrice O'Neill. He was talking about this club. And it, it's sectioned off based on people's relationship status and their gender. Mm. Mm. So there's a group of single men having a good old time. They happy, they drinking, they popping bottles all the time. <laughs> there's a group of single women, miserable as hell. Wow. Where my bow ass? There's a group. There's a group of um, women in a relationship. They happy as hell. They popping bottles. They having a good time with my man. Welcome to my right. man. Mm. And then there's a group. <laughs> I'm sick of you. <laughs> and then there's a group. I gotta throw in a pop culture reference. Like and, then, and then there's a group of. Um, you're fine. You're good. Yeah. And then there's a group of single men. Married men. Oh, man, married men. Mm-hmm. They miserable. They just as miserable as the single women. Mm. I wonder why. Because, again, for men, we think about love through the lens of duty. Mm-hmm. Okay. We think about love through the lens of responsibility. These aren't mm-hmm. sex, sexy things, mm-hmm. right? No. We, we think of it as, oh, man, That's I have fantasy. to be ready to, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever it is, even if I don't want to, mm-hmm. whether that's oh. battle, whether that's work, whatever the case may mm-hmm. be. As a single dude, you living for yourself. Yeah. Right. Wow. But as a, as a married dude, as a man in a relationship, you give a fuck about her. You right. care about her. If she get yeah. off work late, you on the phone making sure she going down a lit up. You know, how many things it's innate to us. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we're not enthusiastic about that process Mm -mm. Mm. because that's another job for me. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if a woman gets me to fall in love with her, damn. She, she got me. She got me. What makes mm-hmm. you fall in love so, with woman? So wait, I was going to say, are we able to oh, ask okay. questions? Yeah. yeah. So would you say that's why men run from that? Absolutely. Or run mm-hmm. from commitment? of that I, Because of that responsibility yeah. that comes mm-hmm. with that's what I think. loving a woman in commitment. So, so He's two, a runner to so, 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 so two things. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the complaints I hear from women, especially you know younger women, is, you know, I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready to commit. And he's not. He's still trying to be a fuckboy. I've been guilty of that mm. in my day. No. But, <laughs> really? But, no. but the thing is, we have to understand I'm racing against a financial clock. You're racing against a biological clock. Mm. So you you ready to be settled down by 25, 24 mm. even. Yeah. Shit, if we being real, 16, biologically mm-hmm. speaking. Yeah. The devil is a liar. But, Child, I ain't 30. Oh. <laughs> but for most men, our clock is based on can I pay a mortgage? Mm-hmm. Can I support a wife and two children? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I support two car payments? Mm-hmm. Can I support insurance and mm-hmm. things like that? Mm-hmm. And for most of us, we're not going to get there till 35. Yeah. Early. Mm-hmm. 30, early. And this is if he's a tech bro and things like that. Right. Right. So yeah, we're yeah. not as enthusiastic about y'all like jumping into that with y'all. But the unfortunate mm-hmm. thing about it is when he's ready, you might not be able to pop kids out no more. Mm-hmm. So that that that, that, that timeline, that, exactly. That's where that tension is, and he might now be looking at, let's say he's thirty five. He might not be looking at a thirty year old, mm-hmm. whereas he wasted your time or he let you go, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the unfortunate reality. And I'm still trying to figure out what the solution is because I'm not hugely mm-hmm. on like huge age gap mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think that's some of the miscommunication between all oh, niggas ain't shit yeah. and women is rushing <laughs> us and things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, I understand the financial part, but what mm-hmm. if you got a partner that's a go-getter? She going to go get it like you go get it. What, well, happens, in those nine nine months, hmm? what happens in those nine months when she can't get it? Oh, she, she, no, she can't sit down the whole nine months. 
But that's that's how we think. Because again, oh, okay, okay, remember, okay, okay, men okay. are provide and protect. Yeah. Right. Provision is about getting the money. Right. Protection is about protecting what you have. But mm-hmm. that's also rhetorical in the sense where think about being a bodyguard, right? Let's say I'm your bodyguard and mm-hmm. we about to go out this door. Okay. I have to assume. There's Please somebody right there. here about to stab you. Uh, there's a sniper on that roof. There's some. There's a puddle right there. You might trip on. I have to be proactive. worst case scenario yeah. oriented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Similarly, men right. are worst case scenario oriented. Yeah. So mm-hmm. whether you are able to help me out during your pregnancy, we're gonna default to you can't. Mm-hmm. We're gonna okay. default to what if she loses her job? It's we're gonna default you. to. Mm-hmm. So until I can feel confident in my ability. To literally take care of you, mm-hmm. I might not be as enthusiastic about. And then sure. this whole new age thing, or we building together and things like that. But again, women are also talking out the other side of their neck. I want a man who makes six figures, six mm-hmm. foot tall. You got to come to the table, sir, six right? inches mm-hmm. and six pack and all that good Lord, stuff. Well, I, I hear a lot of men talking out the side yeah. of their neck. Talking about, about the women got to have, and we got to go 50 50 on those. And you got to pay bills. I was just about to say, what so about, about the 50 50 men? men do we have to be financially stable? Because we 50 50 anyway. So let's talk about it. You hear, I hear all the time now. They're like, oh, I got to, I got to, she got to bring something to the table now, man. Ain't going to be, you ain't going to eat off me, man. Like, what, because, when did that happen? Where was be, that disconnect? Be, because the women started using about. the men for the money. Oh, I guess. It, it I turned into, mm-hmm. it went from we looking at men to provide and protect to the women starting to be like, oh, I'm going to take it for all he got. I want all his coin. He going to buy me this. He going to buy me that. And they not valuing the pro- pro- providing and protecting part. Like, mm-hmm. you should feel honored that a man wants to do these things for you and not mm-hmm. feel like, let me take all his yeah. stuff. And so yeah. now men looking at us like all we want is money when in reality, no, I do not. I do not. I make my own. Now, if you want to give me some, thank you. <laughs> but I ain't about to be out here like, oh, I only want to be with you because you got a coin in your pocket. I can care less. I'll say, I'll say this. <laughs> One of the things that, you know, doing this has taught me is sometimes we overrepresent certain subgroups of people. Okay. And what I mean by that is you know, like on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you always see these videos of women who, yeah, I, I, I'd rather date a drug dealer and things like that. Not realizing that oftentimes, let's say some, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out doing interviews with a camera, mm-hmm. it tends to be that type of individual that's willing to be interviewed. Mm-hmm. The good women are not willing we, to be they're interviewed. Like, they're they're going to walk past, oh, thank you, I'm good. So those people who are like, yeah, he got it, flew me out and mm-hmm. yeah. my pussy... Those are the ones who are the most bombastic and then they end up overrepresented. Similarly, Mm -hmm. I think unfortunately with what about these 50-50 dudes? Personally, I don't know any 50-50 dudes. And I think what happens is a lot of the, like I said earlier, a lot of the 50-50 archetype type of dudes are the ones who do the best with women. They were typically raised by a single mother. Mm. They typically have a whole bunch of style and swag and you know, hood, you know, aesthetic in the whole nine. Now, underneath that, just like you were talking about the dude who'd been in prison, those are actually the most feminine men. Mm -hmm. Low key, people don't Mm -hmm. realize that it's femininity. It's pseudo-masculinity, which is femininity. Mm -hmm. We don't identify it that way, but that is the type of behavior that's incentivized. That boy Mm -hmm. grew up seeing his mom be Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So obviously he's going to expect it from the woman that he's with. Mm -hmm. And now we're using him to over-represent black men, not knowing that there's a whole swath of black men who are willing to take care of you the whole nine. Right. Unfortunately, he might not have the swag. He might not have the emotional exhibitionist that you're used to in the man who's like, you know, can't. Uh, uh, every, leave me like everybody else. That's manipulation. Mm-hmm. But a lot of women mm-hmm. are used to Narcissist. men being mm-hmm. emotional in that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? He's going to be boring because he's peaceful. And not toxic. Mm-hmm. 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 I think it's an age thing now. And may, maybe maybe not. Uh, I think it's the it's a immature <laughs> uh, a mature thing, and it's the a healthy thing. It's it's the maybe immature, the people who are on a healing journey who want to yeah. deal with whatever their issues are to and be more realistic about their expectations because that sounds crazy to me. Like in our twenties, yes. Mm-hmm. Baby, I, I wanted me a hood drug dealer for real. I did. Mm-hmm. I done had a couple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm 35. I never wanted they them because I'm scared. Me. They I, scared well, I'm a BK scared. and I was rebellious, so I did. I did. <laughs> but, but, but also to mm-hmm. the men that are the good men, mm-hmm. 
they've come across a woman that has said, I'm going to take him for everything I got. Right. Now he's broken. Mm-hmm. So when you right. meet the good woman, right. then mm-hmm. now you are traumatized and have PTSD right. and now you're trying to figure out what's her motive exactly. because mm-hmm. although you coming at me a different way you still might have a motive mm-hmm. and I can't go out like a sucker right. see, that, seg- that segue into what I was about to say I feel like the 50-50 thing has come about because men have sat back <laughs> in observance mm-hmm. to see the men who have had the financial success mm-hmm. I mean just completely ob- obliviated so, I mean, mm-hmm. I can't match a Tiger Woods pocket, mm-hmm. but I can see the example that no matter what amount of money I get to establish that with a woman, her loyalty ain't to that. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, men like, okay, well, I'm not finna provide that no more mm-hmm. in, in, in the sense of me taking care of everything because now he want to know whether or not the relationship is real. You're going to go 50-50 with me. It's our thing versus my thing, right? Mm-hmm. So he wants to feel a little more secure now. So he's looking at it as, okay, well, I got all these examples of all these celebrities and, ba- uh, and ball players who make the money I probably never see, who take care of the woman who still don't be a, is not appreciated. So men now are starting to, to, to have that awareness that I'm not finna fork everything out and get left. But I did that myself personally. You know, I, I, I dealt with everything financially for 20 years. Mm. Right. And then when my, my uh, ex-wife decided she wanted to leave because I couldn't put the type of time in with her when I was running a business. Mm. Right, she found somebody that was less valuable than me. She gave her time. But did you? Just my, a question. Did you include her in your business? Yeah, she was actually my clerical work. She did my office work. But see, and that goes back to what I said about men loving more authentically mm-hmm. than women, because men love practically. Yeah, mm-hmm. a woman wants a financially successful man who has a whole bunch of time. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> Those are two different men. It's two I, 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 I want a handsome man who ain't got no hoes. Yeah. I want a charismatic man who <laughs> who, who who doesn't want to be in the mix. Yeah. Right. So 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 you know it's it's, it's 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 not y'all's fault. I think it's right, part of right, y'all's right. nature. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I say men love more authentically is because we take different things into account. Number mm-hmm. one, we're not enthusiastic about loving you in the first place. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we love That's you, we crazy. actually love right. you. Yeah. Right. Like it, I'm, not, it. I'm not it's coming to this job yeah. because it's my my dream or whatever the case yeah. may be. No, I, I, I need to. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm locked in. Whereas women, it's like I've got this mishmash, glued up version of an idealistic man in my head that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. I want a tall, short nigga. A skinny fat nigga. Like it, it, <laughs> so it's like, it's like it's like, and I think <laughs> that's in, that that even goes back to why it's so hard for women to empathize with men and see men as people Mm -hmm. because y'all have seen us as builder bears for so long Mm -hmm. for sure I can't agree with you. I mean, until we, until we can get to a place where we, we see people. But, but I also, make, can I say something yeah. something he said? But I also feel like, too, it, I, I hear what you said mm-hmm. concerning that. But when you get a real woman or yes. a good woman, mm-hmm. you don't have to see if she's going to go 50-50. She's going to come in the gate trying sure. to build you up, trying mm-hmm. to right. pour into yeah. you, trying to add to it, whether you mm-hmm. receive it or not. But I feel like that is your security in knowing, okay, well... Mm-hmm. She ain't here to just take. take yeah. right. She wants to add to it as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, that's before, what I. Before, that's before I, you let me. So when it comes to women, the thing about that is, we go into probably every situation with that if we're trying to find someone to mate with mm-hmm. and like for long term. Mm-hmm. That's where we get the build a bear from because yeah. we're going in trying so hard to show you. I can be the wifey that you need mm-hmm. me to be mm-hmm. rather than coming in being your authentic and full self. Mm-hmm. And while you're coming into this, analyzing whether they can be what you need right. as mm-hmm. a woman. Right. So while it's great that we come in showing you, we can go with you. I'm going to pick you up. Mm-hmm. Are we giving it to the wrong man? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's what I was about to say. No, I don't do that. And mm-hmm. not to put myself over here, but the mm-hmm. times I've done it, it was with a man that I knew that was broken, that was always taken from in past mm-hmm. relationships. So mm-hmm. I came in trying to reassure you that I'm not here to take anything from mm-hmm. you. See, that, to add to you. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Though. We help to the we help the broken you. ones. Yeah. We're fixing the broken ones, but you're not his mom. Yeah. You come in authentically mm-hmm. as you. Yeah. And so I'm showing you I can love you. I can mm-hmm. love you back to health. But in true and truly and honestly, 
He has to fix that. And he has to, to want say, that. He, he has mean, to want to fix that. He has to, to and he has mm. to might be, has be accountable for the yeah. I am broken. I do have trauma that I didn't, I did put all this down from the last That's one. The so okay, I want to heal. Mm. But a lot of men, they was ain't nothing wrong with me. Right. I'm, I'm not worried about I'm, that. I'm, I put that I'm, over I'm here. I'm gonna say this mm-hmm. y'all can push back. Mm-hmm. And you over here shattered, looking like a vase in the floor. It kisses everywhere. I'm gonna say I'm over here with the super glue when you ain't broken and I'm so I got your eye right here. The thing is, the thing is, I think part of women's nature is to be nurturing, nurturing, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is to be conciliatory, right? Mm -hmm. However, I think, especially, I want to hone this into our community. Mm -hmm. I think part of the reason why the story that you're telling about fixing the wrong man, I think why it's so prevalent is because I don't know if the majority of our women know how to handle a good man. Mm. I think that, unfortunately, too many women only feel useful when they are helping fix a broken man. Mm. Because the things that you can do for him are obvious. He need to drive my car. He need to hold a couple of dollars. He needs somewhere to stay. You know, those things are obvious. But a man (laughs) who's actually building something, Mm -hmm. a man who's in school to be a software engineer, a man who's got his own car, got his own apartment. I think part of the hit that our community self-esteem took is subconsciously, some of our Mm -hmm. men and women do not feel deserving of nice things. Mm -hmm. So we will sabotage it and use words like he's boring, he's exciting to excuse our behavior. When the reality is, no, it's not that he's boring and he's exciting. It's just you can readily identify what he needs. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. He needs a mom. Mm -hmm. And I know how to do that. I grew up seeing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to be a wife. I don't know how to be a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up seeing that. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can move the needle away from, oh, these these niggas, they'll let you fix them and then they go their own way, to we are choosing brokenness. Mm -hmm. So similar to Jada... It is in a way, because remember during the interview, she was like, I haven't felt good in a while. It feels good to Mm -hmm. fix somebody, Mm -hmm. especially as a woman, if you're Mm -hmm. an empath and all that good stuff. It feels good. It's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It gives you purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I wish women understood that your power is in the type of masculinity you incentivize. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to fix men, you will continue to incentivize brokenness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All I was about to say, before you go on, I'm 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 a a that was a spirit. That was a spirit. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. It incentivized brokenness. Say it again, brother. I can't remember it. That was a spirit. But I mean, I can agree with you because I can say I've thought that way before, like wanting to be with somebody. And I'm not saying you choose them because they're broken. It's subconscious. It's, yeah, you don't. It's okay, subconscious. I was say it's it's. Like, it's I want to help. I just want to help because mm-hmm. I just want to help. I've been there before, mm-hmm. and it's natural for us to be that way. And and for me, the emotional detachment of it all. Because if I'm emotionally detached, I won't. I don't care. I don't care about you being broke, broken. What you got going? I don't care. I don't care. It's not I, gonna I had one mind. girl. Um, I used to talk to back in the day. She told me, because we were talking about like, uh, you know, her college uh, life or whatever the case may be. And she told me, I don't know how it came up. She was like, I never actually dated men who went to the same school as me. I always dated the locals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, why? Can you explain that? She was like, well, you know, with the men who went to school with me, let's say I'm going to take a test, Mm -hmm. right? And I'd be like, hey, babe, I'm going to take a test. He'd probably be like, yeah, babe, I got a test at two o'clock. You want to study together or whatever the case may be. But with the drug dealer down the street, my little lawyer, my little Michelle Obama. Validation. You, the validation. The validation is out of this world. So mm-hmm. the, <laughs> the, 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 the ego stroke of he mm-hmm. needs me. Mm-hmm. I'm the best thing mm-hmm. that happened to him mm-hmm. is massive. Whereas with the other dude, if it doesn't work, Maybe it was my fault. Mm-hmm. And most of our ego cannot handle that. So we will go where we're the big fish in a small pond. And oh I think that's gosh. why we keep incentivizing yeah. certain types of men. Okay. Mm-hmm. We need to feel and, needed. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like what we're doing has yeah. value in it. I, I, and, yeah, but that allows, that allows uh, us to be belittled too. Yeah. And, and, less, and, and least respected. 
Because if you do help a man, you build a man, you have that to hold over him. But yeah. that, that's what Who it does goes. That? But it goes <laughs> back to what? Yeah. it goes back to you don't feel like you deserve better. Yeah. Mm. And and unfortunately, and this is what breaks my heart, especially in our community. Like, there are a lot of gorgeous women, intelligent mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. But if you actually like search their hearts, they you do not see anything. themselves like that. Mm-hmm. They Gosh. do not see themselves mm-hmm. like that. And you'll see the men they end up with and be like, how the hell is, yeah. is that? But even? that's what she thinks she deserves. Right. Mm-hmm. She might be beautiful. She might be intelligent, mm-hmm. but that's what she thinks she's deserved because mm-hmm. that's who she sees on the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes back to with our culture, we're just now getting to a place where therapy is okay. Mm -hmm. Healing is okay. Mm -hmm. So you have all of these broken men and women running around seeking validation for that little girl or that little boy. So now you're finding value in, I I add value to him and I'm his Michelle Obama. So now I feel validated. Whereas if, like myself, just found out at 39, I needed to heal Mm -hmm. and go on a healing journey. Now a healed person has a different perspective Mm -hmm. than a broken person. Right. Sure. So now that I'm healed, I'm not going to put up with certain things because exactly. I can see brokenness a mile away. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put you down and you're not beneath me. Mm-hmm. But as somebody that has walked in healing and is walking in healing mm-hmm. and pursuing healing, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. I'm not going to just take anything. Right. Because mm-hmm. I, I now know who I am and I now know what I deserve. Save but it. I think it's a lot of broken men and women on mm-hmm. both ends. Mm-hmm. So now you got two broken people trying to come together. Right. Which makes two broken people. Two halves don't make a whole. Right. It makes two halves. Right. Would you say that's so just collectively home, with us or you think that's a universal thing? Our culture? Yeah. I'll say it's universal, but it's bigger with us because therapy okay. was so cliche. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Go pray. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's true. That's you're, true. Not, you're, yeah. not, right. you're not depressed. Right. You got molested, right. but it was swept under the rug. Right. So this trauma was never dealt with. Right. So mm-hmm. now I'm an adult trying to deal with trauma from mm-hmm. when I was five and mm-hmm. got molested. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my body is just, I just give it away and I'm not mm-hmm. worthy of anything. Mm-hmm. All the way from that five-year-old little girl or little boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so mm-hmm. now there's un- that unhealed trauma that is just mm-hmm. into adults. So you got a lot of adults walk around just yeah. bumping into things broken. Mm-hmm. Right. And finding, trying to seek validation in building a man. We which makes the or building a woman because I have heard mm-hmm. men say I got with her because I felt like I can build her up mm-hmm. and she won't cheat because mm-hmm. she ain't you know mm-hmm. she's not a dime but she's mm-hmm. you know she's not a penny either mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I'm gonna get with her because it's easier she's safe. because yeah. she can look up to me she's she safe woman. and that mm-hmm. I was scratching my head like huh mm-hmm. and then he said well when I built her up then she started acting like she was Beyonce and she cheated right. well because. That still goes back to she didn't know who she was. Yeah. It has nothing to do with mm-hmm. her looks. It has yeah. everything to do with what's inside. Yeah. She right. still got that big deal. Yeah, she still, yeah. yeah. This is my issue with therapy, though, because I genuinely feel like the African diaspora, we all need psychotherapy. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we, whether Africa, because I'm African, I'm Nigerian, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So colonialism mm-hmm. took a toll on us. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, uh, yes. Slavery took a toll on y'all. Yes. Um, so I think. There's a lot of passed down bullshit on, yes. the show, on both sides. True. Definitely. What I will say, though, I think, unfortunately, in our community, we are starting to celebrate what I call pop therapy. Because mm-hmm. uh, I hate when people give me therapy speak. It is, it is one thing to go into therapy and truly unpack your traumas and work on becoming mm-hmm. a better version of you mm-hmm. and actually living it out. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing to go to two sessions and then all of a sudden... You're point. speaking like you're a therapist yeah. and you're talking expert. about how, pe- how everybody's wronged you, mm-hmm. but you're still not taking accountability. accountability. Right. You're, it's, still, it's you're creating, still not living out what you're it's doing. It's creating so narcissism. Thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100% it's, and, and narcissism. Unfortunately, I will put that on women. I will oh. say I will say that what? I'm seeing that. No, you good. I'm seeing that more so with women because men are not super therapized. What I'm seeing happen is a lot of women are, a lot of black women are getting therapy, but they're not doing the work. They're just getting therapy to say, I've got therapy. So mm-hmm. now I have permission to talk down to you, mm-hmm. non therapized person. Oh. You think they're going you're to therapy? Not doing to the stay work. Away, but no, they're going to therapy to get the MD. To get the badge. Oh, yeah. right. to, 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 to get, get the, something the badge to of make it seem or, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit. Uh, I'm working on me. I'm healed because right I went to therapy. See, so it's, it's pop therapy. And, and it, it, a lot of it, when you start investigating it, it does lead to that narcissism. And I'm talking about that talking down, looking. You know, mm-hmm. looking down yeah. your nose, especially at men, mm-hmm. because the idea is oh. because I am more emotionally expressive, mm-hmm. I am more emotionally intelligent. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And the opposite is the case. Right. The opposite is the case. Yeah, a sure. lot of Definitely. women are emotionally expressive. But not I emotional. call them emotional but exhibitionists. Emotional. They'll yep. cry, mm-hmm. they'll laugh, they'll be sad. Mm-hmm. They might even be able to identify I'm I'm laughing, I'm sad, whatever the case may be. But as far as regulating it, mm-hmm. as far as accurately identifying it and being like, oh, I'm not actually mad, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. They don't have that that mm-hmm. ability. And where nobody's actually calling this out. We're just saying, oh, she's therapized and Jamal ain't. So she's a better person than Jamal. Oh, no. Which is why you, oh, I no. mean, m- most of the time when you go, <laughs> oh, no. when women go uh, for an evaluation, they're diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm. You ever, you know that, right? Mm. And most women are diagnosed with that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. I was not diagnosed. But I think with that what, what adds to it, too, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a right oh diagnosis, right. Right. but I'm but saying. Unfortunately, that. there's an inequity also in uh, the, the therapeutic industry. Like most therapists are women. Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so oftentimes it just ends up being and (laughs) the thing too is we assume doctors are healthy but sometimes doctors are some of the most unhealthy people same with therapists yeah for sure so very often your therapist your female therapist might be worse and be more broken that might be be friends that's That's true (laughs) and you now regurgitating toxicity yep Oh. Yeah, she's gonna be your friend your therapist at the at the couple sessions that's what i'm saying and instead of actually problem solving and i think also part of women's nature y'all are more like y'all aren't as regimented as men mm-hmm. y'all y'all are more i want the catharsis i want to talk it through mm-hmm. but right. as far as i need a plan and this how right. i execute it that's not necessarily all strong suit i'm not saying all of you guys but with that being said with the overabundance of therapists mm-hmm. that are black women and then the over the popularity mm-hmm. of black women seeking therapy y'all just in the office kicking it Y'all ain't really getting no How work you know done. For real. I was gonna say not because, <laughs> because did you <laughs> see now. did you see the therapist who went uh, viral? I think it was last year. She was saying that she no longer wants to take on a black male client. It's yeah, been two of them. I remember actually. that. Oh, no, I, mm. I remember it's, that. It's been two that. of them. One of them, she, she got, was she, she was twerking, shaking her ass, and all kinds of stuff. And like black men ain't this and that. that. And then she's another one, she was saying that she's tired of working with black men. And then they took her off one of the black male therapy sites, and she got mad. Mm. So like. The level of immaturity that we're seeing. I'm asking myself, yo, who gave you a therapy license? Right. Mm-hmm. About to say, where You're not it? even mature. I'm about to say, yeah. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. so with that being said, I think that's part of the reason men are so unenthusiastic about going to therapy. Because it's like, that's mm-hmm. what I'm going to run into. Mm-hmm. Another woman saying that I'm the problem. Mm-hmm. With no context or consideration yeah. in my life. Mm-hmm. Well, I had a situation happen say, recently mm-hmm. where it was like, Is a, she really hear me when I'm in that session? Yeah, I was telling y'all earlier when you missed it, but mm-hmm. one of my Longtime guy friends hit me with some therapy speak about a situation that made no sense. And it had been months since we had talked and all this stuff. And it's just like, don't, don't therapy, don't therapize me. That's mm-hmm. what I'm calling it. Mm-hmm. Y'all know like make up words. Therapize. Don't, don't, That's a word. Don't, don't therapize. Don't That's a word. word. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, come yeah, on, come on. Come on now. <laughs> don't therapize me it's because. Spirit. Yeah. You, it, right <laughs> here. Yeah. Don't do that because out of saying all this, I'm trying to work on myself. And in my in my healing journey and all this I've done for me, you're saying I, I, mm. I, I. And then you're still not taking yep. that, that accountability. You're not understanding another perspective or side. So I think it's trickling over into the men too, because this was a man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we're not, because again, we're we're at a place where everybody's like it's sensationalized. So everybody's mm-hmm. doing it, mm-hmm. but we're not doing it properly. There's yeah, a there's just, a term called internal locus of control and then external locus of control. Mm-hmm. And basically internal is you take responsibility for your world, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas external is it's everything and everyone's fault but mine. Yes. Yeah. I think what pop therapy has created amongst men and women mm-hmm. is this idea that I am the prevalent victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And now I have the vocabulary to twist and articulate how I'm the victim, <laughs> mm-hmm. as opposed to the part that I played. So even in Will Smith's situation, yeah. mm-hmm. to bring it back to that, I don't feel bad for the nigga. Mm-mm. No, I, I don't. Think, no, you I don't. Stayed with her, and you knew you she was, it. and you, you, a you lot knew of men, more to better than anybody. And I've been talking is. about this during my case studies. A lot of men, unfortunately, are sadomasochistic. They mm-hmm. seek out. The worst, most terrible women that they can seek out. You know those women who say, "Oh, I don't have a bad attitude. You can't handle me." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, the, the, or the dudes who say, "Oh, she gay. Oh no, she not gay. Wait till she she gets somebody." We seek out because y'all tell my nerd stop DMing me. Talk about <laughs> you can change my mind because you cannot. We seek, all right. We seek <laughs> out challenges, Damn. and then we want empathy for when it goes wrong. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times these to your point, mm-hmm. you can see these red flags from a mile away, but yeah. you think it's six flags. Yeah. You think exactly. it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's a circus. Mm-hmm. Same with women. Mm-hmm. But again, men do this too. And I think part of it is this popularizing of oh, we getting therapy and this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. And nobody's calling it out. Yeah. That whole thing um, about so I'm protecting my peace, a, but uh, a lot of people, it's not taking accountability. It isn't such thing as protecting your right. peace, but mm-hmm. cutting everybody off that has a disagreement with you it's not yeah. because you're not taking accountability. Because after you cut off four or five people, there's a common denominator. Come oh, on yeah. Now. You. Come on. Right. So, therefore, you're not protecting your peace. You are dodging accountability. Yeah. To whereas if you have that conversation is, yeah, you were wrong. Yeah, you you the one that did it. It was not us. Mm. It was you. But a lot of people go around, I'm protecting my peace. Mm. And you cutting off 10 and 15 people. If you change in circles every year, mm. you're it's the problem. You're the problem. Right. It's you, baby. So, you're not protecting your peace. You're mm. dodging accountability. And you yeah. can look at a person's life to see who's elevated and who hasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when you're doing the work, you un- you already gonna see it. I mean, it's, it's pretty true. evident. It's clear. So when when you that's how I evaluate people, friends, the same mm-hmm. way. So if anyone's in my circle, if I see you elevating, I know you're doing the work. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I see you talking, I know you're just talking. Yeah, it's just two different things. So you can talk, Where's you can talk fruit? a good game, as they would say. Mm-hmm. The but if you are really into uh, your self growth and development, you're gonna be mindful of what you're around, what you interact mm-hmm. with so that those things don't continue to bring trauma to you. Because mm-hmm. you're already trying to alleviate the trauma anyway that you experienced by growing up and whatever, you know. So you're, you know, like me, I'm constantly erasing things as fast as I possibly can. So in my mind, if I'm having a conversation, I might not remember what you said to me because it ain't valuable, right? Mm-hmm. But then I get to say, you ain't, you ain't heard nothing I said. Mm-hmm. I heard everything you said, just wasn't valuable enough for me to hold on to it. Mm-hmm. And we, I, I, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. But I truly believe too, we attract what we are, whether exactly. you want to be accountable for that or not, men and women. Mm-hmm. So if you're attracting the same type of man or the same type of woman, what is it in you mm-hmm. that is attracting them or bringing them towards you? Right. You have to be accountable and say, okay, exactly. what do I have to fix? What am I mm-hmm. putting right. out here on social right. media right. that's got my DM jumping exactly. right. on the Netflix and chill? What am mm-hmm. I putting right. out here that makes her want to, mm-hmm. you know, come and run through my money? Am I putting out here my mm-hmm. stacks? Am I putting out right. here my exactly. profession? If I'm a if I'm a basketball player or a truck driver mm-hmm. or somebody that we know make a lot of, I work at BMW and you like this all day. Mm-hmm. We know what type of money BMW yeah, does, exactly. right? So if you got women trying to take advantage of you, what are you putting out there? What are you putting mm. out there? You lead, see, most men you're like to lead with, with that. Yeah. Lead with their finances. Women, you're leading you know, with right. yeah. certain type of pictures, yeah. certain type of outfits, certain type of verbiage. Mm, exactly. If you're leading with that, then if you throw the bait, then you're going to get the fish. So you right. said that, yeah, I mean, you said a mouthful early, you know, out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth, the mouth speaks. speaks. So what's really in you? Can't, you can't. Con- yeah. 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 You can't control that. If, if, if it's in you, that's what's coming out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no. And what are you? Pr- what kind of fruit are you putting out? Right. Exactly. As that's well true. as you said, what's your productivity look like? Fruit? If you're doing the work and you in therapy, but I see you on here throwing shade on Facebook and being toxic, mm. the therapy ain't working, baby. Because why are you doing it? I guess I'm a, I don't want to stop y'all. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. But at the same time, what's the grace period on healing? Like how long? It's a lifelong journey. It's it a, is it's right. Healing, so you're always how experiencing long trauma? Will it take for somebody to get the accountability part of it if they're just starting their their healing journey? Mm. You know, like it, it would be up to the people, uh, up to the person to discern whether they want to continue to be in this person's life who mm-hmm. is still fresh or early in their healing stages. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, we're talking about people who you go to therapy, which you're doing this, but like. It takes time. And sometimes it's certain things that have to happen or certain conversations or things that need to come up for them to know, okay, I do need to accept accountability. So I'm I'm just thinking like, well, how long had this person been in, in therapy for you to feel like, oh, you, you the therapy ain't working for you? You get what I'm saying? I'm not well, going to say- I feel, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> but I feel like to really go to therapy to do the work and to heal or to accept healing, you have to take accountability. Mm -hmm. That say that there's brokenness, that there's a trauma. So you do have some level of accountability. I think I'm speaking to the people that he said are just going to therapy to have my badge. Mm -hmm. And so I've been to six sessions, but there is no fruit. There is no elevation. There is no growth. So it's really not a grace period because we're always experiencing trauma. Mm -hmm. Right. All of our life we're experiencing, but I think it takes a certain level of accountability to say, I really want to heal. Not I'm 
going to therapy so I can check it off the list. And, and I'm going to do the work. I'm, be, I'm my best version of me, but we don't see the best version yeah. of you. Not gotcha. even a. So I think that's in my opinion, though. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a certain level of accountability to say I need to heal. Because I know when I figured that out at 39, mm-hmm. I was like, it was me this whole time. Right. And it's, this it's, whole honestly, time. it's honestly immediate <laughs> if you want to be if you want to be real about it. When you start, you're he- like call it what you want a healing mm-hmm. journey, therapy, whatever mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. When you start working on taking accountability with yourself and understanding mm-hmm. that sometimes you're the problem, mm-hmm. there's a it, it clicks. So it does. everything it does. else that you do, you're intentional about mm-hmm. ensuring that you're not the problem. Right. And in those times where you are the problem, whether it be intentional or unintentional, mm-hmm. you, you still take apologize. accountability yep. for it. You you do what is necessary in those moments mm-hmm. so that you don't continue down that vicious cycle that got you where you were before you were on the other side of your healing. Right. And honestly, mm-hmm. truly, I feel like it's cool to know that you're working on you and your healing, but the highest compliment you can receive is someone who's working on being a better version of you daily is for the people around you to see it. To see right. it. And not only to see it, but to express it to you. True. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, you've known me in a lot of phases of my life. Yes, God. I, I have not always been this person. No. But for, <laughs> I've not always been who she is Woo! sitting here. Woo! But for my friends, when, when, and when things from people I think are my friends impact mm-hmm. me so heavily, for my friends that I have that have known me through these phases, mm-hmm. speak that life back into me and let me know you're not her anymore. You don't right. have you don't mm-hmm. have to feel this way because that's not who you are. Right. Mm-hmm. Then you know you're making it. Mm-hmm. That, I guess that's the confirmation you mm-hmm. want. But honestly, truly, when it comes but, to but your you healing, it's, it's 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 gonna be immediate because immediate. You do, mm-hmm. to truly work on you and being a better version of yourself daily that's by true. taking accountability, being you know healed or whatever. It is an immediate thing. You're not going to be perfect at it, but it's immediate. Right. It's immediate. Know, what, uh, go ahead, Alan. No, go make your point. Make your point. Um, if I'm sitting back, as I'm sitting here thinking about accountability, it's very interesting that we're having this conversation because it's so powerful. Right? Mm-hmm. Accountability is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, it'll take you from a state of ignorance to a state of awareness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as I'm, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, culturally, mm-hmm. the foundation since we were kids we were taught not to be accountable. Mm. Mm. So now when I think about this, what's the first story that anybody, just give me, I'm going to ask anybody at the table, what's the first story of unaccountability that you can remember that was told to you? Uh, The Bible? Let's go Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Let's go there. No, 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 I just just want to tap in. I just just want to tap in one second. But but the the story of Adam and Eve? Okay. Yeah. That accountability stretches across the planet Mm -hmm. because who didn't take accountability? Eve. Right? Mm-hmm. So that accountability, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, how that stretches across the planet for us not to acknowledge accountability. Right? As people, we don't know to acknowledge accountability. We don't know how to say it's just, I did it. It's my fault. Mm-hmm. Somebody else shouldn't suffer because I did that. Right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is, if we've been raising kids and we've be cre- created a culture of normality of not taking accountability, and then we get with people in relationships how do we transition that that's so baked in? You got people that's 40, 50, 70, 80, right? Mm-hmm. Into that phase of still not accepting accountability. Kurt Franklin mama. Yeah. Girl. I want right. to be- yeah, that's Girl. deep right there. Kurt yeah. Franklin mama. Yeah. You know, and, and I want to make I want to make a yeah. distinction because I think what I'm seeing happen is, yeah, I did it and what? Mm. And that's and that's all- being mm-hmm. framed that's all- as true. accountability yeah. as opposed mm-hmm. to, yes, I did it. I am remorseful mm. that I did it. How can I fix it? How, how, how can I fix how it? Can I or better? I'm ready to face the consequences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, going back to mm. something you said earlier about, you know, once I heal, then I think part of that mm. accountability is understanding that it might mean that what, what you might have qualified for mm. you before no your do. healing, mm-hmm. you, no longer do. you no longer do after your healing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I think re- amongst women mm-hmm. as well, that's a very, very tough pill to swallow, yeah. right? It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I turned you down in high school before you were a millionaire. Mm-hmm. But now that you're a millionaire, you're mm-hmm. successful, and I'm not the same high school girl, I, I'm still deserving of you, which, mm-hmm. is not, which is not accountability inherently because you're expecting him to evaluate you mm-hmm. the same way he did all those years ago. Mm-hmm. And you're expecting that he evaluates himself the same way he, he was all valued all those years mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. So accountability, I think, is really humility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, that's at God. the core of healing. Humility. Yeah. It's humility. And 
that's my issue with this whole therapy movement because it's not encouraging humility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Humility. It's just uh, encouraging being able to identify mm-hmm. and articulate problems mm-hmm. in everybody else. They mm-hmm. not really want to pick them. Me. Yeah, I feel you. Mm-hmm. That was good. And I, that sure. was good. Thank you. Yeah, and, no, no, no. and that speaks to what I was sitting here thinking too. When it comes to accountability, a lot of people don't want to take it because you have to accept the consequences come on now. that come with come it. On now. And for me, I can say as a woman that has fumbled a a, a good man, mm. as a woman, you have to take accountability that was me. Yep. So that's an <laughs> ego even... hit to say oh, yeah. it was me that caused this man to walk away. Right. Not that it's something wrong with him, and mm. I was too he strong, and I was me. too independent, mm. right. and he couldn't tame me. You're right. not a beast. I'm right. a woman that used to say Ooh. that mm. he can't tame me. And right. a man said, you're not a wild beast. I don't need to, girl. I just, mm. What did he just say? But <laughs> what you talking to? Who you talking to? And that was my reaction. Mm. But I think the accountability comes with the consequences. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the consequences mm-hmm. are going to be an ego hit. Mm. Whether it be the man or the woman. Because a man don't want to take accountability Mm -mm. for his shortcomings in the relationship that makes that woman leave. Right. So now I'm gonna say it was her. Mm -hmm. She ain't healed. She's Mm -hmm. got trauma. Mm -hmm. She's she's making me holding me accountable for all the other men. No, you be accountable for you and she be accountable for her. Mm -hmm. And y'all can come together and fix it together. Right. Mm. But you have to be humble enough to say, it's something wrong with me. Right. That could that could be that could be the solution (laughs) to how we heal this thing. You know, oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, I told for you real. what I said. That, it's that could, okay to be that, who you are. Yeah, Indeed. that could be. But you you fix some of the stuff. You've you said it to me in the past when Humility. I felt like you have to say when I. You didn't know didn't know who I was, but I probably wasn't comfortable with who I was when I first met Porky mm. or Portia Bube. Mm-hmm. It's my mm-hmm. All of that, mm. but I probably wasn't comfortable in who I was. But she loved. Who I was like if that made sense. Mm. She loved who I was probably more than I loved who I was at Ooh. the time. Mm. Come on, and so it was like her being my friend and really like loving the authentic mm-hmm. me that I could show her with no judgment. Mm-hmm. Because as being a PK, I'm judged mm-hmm. by Hello. people because they want me to look like or be like or whatever, and mm-hmm. I could really be just who I am, free in that. Mm-hmm. And not have to worry about she's gonna use it against me later. Mm-hmm. She's gonna throw it in my face. She's gonna talk about me behind my I didn't have to worry about that. She her. made you feel safe. Yeah. Definitely. And so But who and stress your girl out because still had to call you out on your shit. Fact, but it was necessary. Baby. It was mm-hmm. needed. I, I didn't have a friend like that who would call me out mm-hmm. or whatever, or or say, You're good in this, but you need to work on this. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I appreciate that. I'm grateful for that for her. But and also for me, like if she see this in me, what well, I need to see it for myself. Mm, and yeah. so digging deep too, you know, like I feel like I started my my healing journey what seven eight years ago, probably it's definitely. On, so I got I got two questions, and I guess we'll end on this. No, unless you got something else, Alan, mm-hmm. for the beautiful lady here and the beautiful lady here. Mm-hmm. What have you learned now in your approach to dating a man? What What would you say that? From from your experience, mm-hmm. that you would you would go into new newly doing new now with a man. Oh, why you ain't ask me? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, no. I'm just, you take it. You take it. You know what I mean? You take it. I know you're not single. I was about to say, girl. Yeah, you know what I mean? She <laughs> drew the sauce all over the place. You know what I mean? I'm about to be looking out the door. I'm just saying this earlier about um being their friend first and like really getting to know them before I say, oh, I want to be in a relationship with him mm-hmm. or whatever. And I feel like that takes longer than three months too. Mm-hmm. I feel like I I kind of understand why men take it slow with women sometimes in certain situations. If they're really serious about this woman or whatever the case may be, they don't mind taking it slower other mm-hmm. than, you know, I just want to get to it, whatever. So for me, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm not really ready to, I was talking about this earlier with my bestie, like, baby, I'm not trying to be out here in these streets randomly with men. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm going to be out in these streets, mm-hmm. he's my man. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to just be out randomly dating a man. Mm-hmm. Like, I just like, let's be friends. We could be friends. We build mm-hmm. on that. And then if we feel like it's going to turn into a relationship and we want to start, like, going out and dating, I'm more cool with that because I can say, this is my man. And mm-hmm. I can be out with him and not, I guess, for me, I, I feel like, my reputation or who I am, I just can't be out here in these streets with just anybody or whatever. And so mm-hmm. I keep a lot of stuff private. And But being their friend first is the most important thing for me. Now, do you feel any pressure, I would say, to... Because, you know, we moving fast now in this day and age as far as mm-hmm. sexual pleasure. You mm-hmm. know, men ain't just going to wait around no more. Right. Right? So I understand it's like, oh, you know, the Steve Harvey rule, 90 days. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So, I mean, how do you fit that into trying to make all that work? 
Do you make him wait if he have other options? No. Okay. I don't make a man wait. If I want him, I want him. Okay. I yeah. mean, yeah. period. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm grown, we grown. Okay. And like, you know how they be like, test the car or whatever before yeah. you drive it or take it off the lot, whatever the case may be. Sometimes I might feel like that. Just, I'm just yeah. being honest, you know? Mm -hmm. However, test I will, that. You got test drive now. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will say, nothing. not everybody going to get that. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's very selective. It's very mm -hmm. selective on who I decide or choose to be friends with you and, and mm -hmm. we can have a good time too. And it ain't with everybody. Gotcha. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I I like being single. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. It's been a year for me now. Thank mm -hmm. God. Woo! Mm -hmm. I made it a year. Thank mm -hmm. God. Jesus. I know, right? And so I just wanted to take this time for myself to mm -hmm. be like, see, first of all, mm -hmm. start over and mm -hmm. see what type of men do you like, darling? Because mm -hmm. you don't know. Mm -hmm. You like, you know, just a whole fresh new eyes now. You don't mm -hmm. know what you like. So figure out what you like mm -hmm. and then make sure you be their friend first before you fall in love with them. Mm -hmm. Basically. Mm -hmm. I'll say this and then we'll close out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a psychology nerd. A nerd. Mm -hmm. A nerd. And um, one of the things that's like fascinating about psychology, so there's something called the dark triad. Mm -hmm. It's uh, psychopathy, um, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. So mm -hmm. psychopathy you're kind of born with, you know, it's the, the we think of them as serial killers, but they don't have a conscience. Mm -hmm. And sociopathy is on that spectrum. Uh, sociopathy, mm -hmm. something happened in your life that turned you into a psychopath. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is a lot of those traits are like s signified by I don't care about anybody but myself. Mm -hmm. So much so that I can kill people. Mm -hmm. um, I see myself as God. Mm -hmm. I see myself as superior to people. Mm. But what's interesting is those people also simultaneously hate themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's fascinating and going back to the whole humility thing, mm -hmm. I think this first play of energy that mm -hmm. we are circulating in mm -hmm. our society right now, it's on the narcissism spectrum, which is on the psychopathy spectrum, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it really boils down to self-hate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we don't think about it that way mm -hmm. because no. we just see the confidence and the mm -hmm. over the top shit. But it's really, I don't like myself. And mm -hmm. because I don't like myself, the only way I can conceptualize myself is as a God, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. larger than life and better yeah. than everybody. I got to so spend I, 100 million in six months. Mm -hmm. So I would say we should, especially in our community, we should be a bit more authentic with mm -hmm. our feelings and our emotions mm -hmm. and why we do the things that we do, whether it's decisions we make in uh, mates, mm -hmm. the yeah. decisions we make in how we move mm -hmm. and the consequences mm -hmm. that result in that. Because if we can start moving in that direction, I think it it will become easier to empathize with men mm -hmm. as a woman mm -hmm. and right. empathize with women as a man. Because we're humans. We're mm -hmm. flawed. We we're mm -hmm. walking contradictions. A lot of shit don't sure. make sense. We say this, but we actually want that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I think these conversations really help that. And mm -hmm. sure. I want to shout y'all out because just the optics of three black women, two black men having a respectful Mm -hmm. authentic sure. deep yeah. conversation Definitely. I think we need to put that out more in the ether yeah. so sure. shout out to y'all yes. appreciate you to go out there and eat absolutely. absolutely I'm yes. gonna give everybody a last word and then we'll close this thing out no they don't start with me let's start with why you oh, oh, you gotta bless the mic you gotta bless the mic you got it oh what am I doing answering his question no, 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 just it's last just, word. Just, just last, last word. Yeah. No, but I think you're absolutely right. Um, in this day and age, that's what a lot of people go to, social media, mm -hmm. um, podcasts, and things like that. So just having a healthy conversation, I was talking to him earlier, um, that's what we lack also. A lot of people don't know how to communicate in a healthy manner right. to where you don't agree with me, I don't agree with you, but we can come and we can talk about it and see each other's perspective and mm -hmm. not bash each other mm -hmm. because we don't agree with each other. So this is definitely needed and necessary. Necessary, and we just got to start taking accountability for, for sure, us. Sure. Start take, accountability is the biggest. If we can get that, yeah, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Everything that and brings humility and everything else that will open the gateways for so many things mm -hmm. and stop blaming everybody else or stop blaming, finding somebody to put the blame on. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not you, don't look at somebody to blame. Mm -hmm. um, but if it is, you definitely stop blaming everybody. Right. And mm -hmm. again, all these expectations and perspectives and mm -hmm. me. Memes. A meme is somebody I can make a meme now. I can make 500 of them. Mm -hmm. Stop going off of that. Yeah. Look, look, really look into it and really research and don't be going off a meme and you posting it off of trauma. Mm -hmm. 
Because right. a lot of the stuff that's put out is put out from trauma. Yeah. It's from a woman that has been traumatized, a man that has mm-hmm. been traumatized. Mm-hmm. Even some of the um, podcasts and different things, it's mm-hmm. an opinion. Mm-hmm. We all have them. Mm-hmm. But make sure it's not rooted in a trauma because you're putting yeah. out all this stuff and now you're taking in this toxicity right. and thinking it's right, right just because they said it on social media. Everything on the internet ain't mm-hmm. right. And it's a lie too. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> spit it, spit Fast. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jot a guy seven, talk to him. I would say... The most valuable thing that I've learned in my 47 years on the planet is self-evaluation. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Learning to look. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, self-evaluation and accountability. Mm-hmm. Learning to put, the, put yourself back in a position of power mm-hmm. where you're not blaming anything outside of yourself. But learning to uh, contextualize everything that you've experienced and appreciating the experience so that it does serve you in your growth and development so that you can continue to heal yourself and help others. That's how I pretty much live my life every day. And it has helped me over the last 22 years of living that way, of blessing other people to be able to see that with inside of themselves. Mm. So when I, I, I interact with people, I always get people to see and evaluate the spectrum of their ego. Mm. And if they can silence the ego, everything else kind of submits to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when we learn that that we are in control, we have power, right? Mm-hmm. Power is always there within inside of us. We have to stop looking at ourselves as these powerless entities and beings, mm-hmm. right? We actually can change. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says man dominates man to his injury, right? So when you look at how we affect each other through our actions, once we learn humility, vulnerability, then we step into a state of power that we can transition the world that we live in. I've always believed that the world has gotten a chaotic state because of our participation, Mm -hmm. but the world can get in a loving state the same way. Mm -hmm. It's just how we trajectorize it. Mm -hmm. So I wake up every day on the planet and I operate in a manner of love Mm -hmm. so that I can project that not only to myself, but to other people. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. All right, Porky, make us go viral again. Oh, man, I ain't got to listen. <laughs> I, got, I gotta go search this clip. <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. She, I'm gonna y'all, search it. it's been great. I love all the conversations we've had today. I'm gonna just tell you to love yourself enough to understand that you're the problem sometimes, Ooh. and mm-hmm. respect Ooh. yourself enough Come on. to understand that you have to be the solution. Yep. Say it again. Mm-hmm. Yep. Say it again. <laughs> yeah. You have to love yourself enough to understand that sometimes you are the problem, mm-hmm. and have enough respect for yourself. To also be the solution. That's without Amen. a doubt. She going viral. She going viral. She going viral. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's right. Now. They don't want to hear it. Say something. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly Bang what the women need to hear right there. Play <laughs> 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 like too much. All right, dude. You talk to us. Uh, my spirit says value yourself. Mm-hmm. And value others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you value yourself and you value others, like, we'll be able to communicate. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to accept accountability because we care about that person because we mm-hmm. value them. We don't want to hurt them. Um, I want us, I would love for everybody to be completely healed. That would mm-hmm. that would be dynamic, but that's mm-hmm. not always that's the case. Mm-hmm. So we just have to choose right, choose mm-hmm. better, right. choose, mm-hmm. make wiser decisions. Like, being careful about who you bring into your mm-hmm. your space and your your world, mm-hmm. you have to be careful with that. If you value people, mm-hmm. not everybody on gonna come here. Mm-hmm. So you determine you have the 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 power to say I don't want to be around mm-hmm. this because they're not here. They're not on the same level as mm-hmm. me in a sense. And it's not that you looking down. It's just what you. Mm-hmm. want to deal with and how you want to protect yourself mm-hmm. yeah. and I don't feel like there's anything wrong with protecting yourself from toxicity mm-hmm. I yeah, said that right right yes, yes. Yeah. you got it so yeah. value yourself and value others or whatever and then go learn Jesus go mm-hmm. go talk to the Lord yeah. mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know you, that. Girl, yeah. Girl, yeah. Nah, you need to go talk mm-hmm. to the Lord mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you need to go have a little prayer hand. time but yeah so thank y'all for having me I appreciate it appreciate y'all I have a quick sentence for that look I know we about to close and take accountability when you choose wrong. That's yeah. right. That Without a doubt. Right. Right. You got anything yeah. you want to close it out with, brother? Nah, that's it. You got right. shit. That's right. All right. That's all right.